And now we're at world four of Jumping Flash, which means, believe it or not, we are halfway through this game. So let's go ahead and move into the Ice Forest level, 4-1. Now when you think of ice levels, what is the one thing you think of? Yep, lack of friction. It's here too. Although to be fair, that doesn't actually play much of a role in a game where you're spending most of your time just flying through the air. Now, what we're going to try and do is get on top of this thing, because if you look up from here, you can see platforms that... Ah, damn it. By the way, yes, those are crabs. Crabs in a snow level. Try and explain that to me. Okay, here's the first jet pod. Now we're going to get a running start and jump right to the next one. And yes, we made it. Now from here, we're going to start following these floating platforms, which kind of go around one side of the island. And we have to jump to the next house. And our ultimate goal is that. That floating platforms that spirals up the tower. Now, to be safest, it's best to just jump on these gem-looking things, because they're uh, the biggest targets to hit uh, as far as platforming goes. So we'll just jump from each of these, and I think pretty soon we can just double jump straight up to the tower. Yeah, this is the last one, so just head straight into the tower from here, and there's no friction here either. God damn it. You can see the bonus ring floating out there, I'll explain that later, but right now we want to get this jet pod which is positioned right on the edge of the island. So by far the best way to do this is just land on top of it, so you don't have to risk sliding off the edge. And now, we need to go up these floating platforms in order to get to the exit. And jump over here. Spot your jump and make it up here. Now what we're actually going to do is land to the side of the exit, not on the actual exit pad. Because, there's the bonus ring. When we fall straight through here, we'll get another bonus level similar to the other ones, although this one is more maze-like. Uh, the most efficient way I've found to deal with this is to make your way to the outside and just do laps, destroying all the balloons in your path along the way. As you can see, I've already cleared the outer path here. They gave you a decent amount of time to do these, so that definitely helps. Now the only tricky part is with this. What I've done is uh, use R1 to hold still and look down at the balloon that's in the gap, and then fire away at it. Of course, I was nervous and trying to do this really fast, so I would keep letting go of R1 before I had actually destroyed the balloon, and that slowed me down. That's somewhat annoying that you have to hop up slightly to destroy most of these balloons because unless they're floating like right down to the ground, you're not going to hit them. Jeez. And let's see. The other one is right across from this one. Yes, two seconds. And the only bad part about this level is you have to make your way back up to the exit path. But it could be worse. At least they didn't dump you right on the ground. Yes, made it. And you're probably wondering why my score keeps resetting after every word. Well, that's because in Jumping Flash, unless you're playing the entire thing through in one go, if you have to, like, retire and then save the game, because that's the only way you can save in this, it'll reset your score every time you load it up. Which is also why all my extra lives haven't been carrying over. And now World 4-2 is yet another one of these sort of like Wolfenstein, dungeon crawling, sort of first person shooter type deals. And this one is slightly more maze-like, although they do close off a bunch of paths. And they give you plenty of time to be able to do this, unlike, uh, I think that was World 2-2, where the last one was. These penguins are not really much of an obstacle, because in addition to just walking around them, you can actually jump over them. These things are the biggest pain in the ass, because they will continuously launch those sonic rings at you. Uh, although, the weird thing about this is, uh, there are a lot of enemies in Jumping Flash, which if you touch them, they won't hurt you. 
It's only when they actually do their attack that they'll hurt you. Which I enjoy. Alright, now this is why we saw the sunken ship earlier. It's because there's this one section with a ship. Yeah, that's it, and we're already going to move on. Seems to me kind of lackluster to advertise the ship like that, and then it's just that one section. Now what you'll notice here is that the jet pods in this area have a very definite progression to them. You're not, like, in the wide open areas actively trying to find uh, ways to get them, and yes! The power pill is basically like uh, the invincibility star in Mario. Except, uh, unlike Mario, if you touch enemies here, they explode! Which I love! Of course, money coming out of them doesn't hurt, but, uh... Alright. Try and focus. Don't get carried away with the power pills. Yeah, as you can see, there's not really much of a mystery as to where you're supposed to go. Even in instances like these, there's usually one path that is blocked off. Oh yes, I got it again! Oh, beautiful colors! Oh, please tell me there's something else around here that I can kill! Yes, get over here! Ooh, and a time extension! Alright, we are almost through this level. We just gotta head down here, through the tunnel. And this part is a little tricky. Uh, your first time through, you're probably going to fall on this part. What you have to do is drop down onto the jet pod, which is on a floating platform, and then from there, drop down to the exit. What you're probably going to do the first time through is drop all the way to the bottom. And then it's going to be a pain in the ass getting back up, because attached to the bottom of all these floating platforms are more of those sonic ring-shooting bastards. But, all in the past now, we're through this world. And the boss for this section is by far the most difficult yet. I would say that uh, from the last boss, the learning curve to this one is a little steeper. You're about to see why. The boss for World 4-3 is a giant robotic turtle, which doesn't seem threatening until it does this. It shoots bombs all over the room. And there's usually only like a few places where you'll be completely safe from the blast. And then it'll also launch these some sort of heat-seeking missiles. You can redirect them pretty easily. And here's basically what you can do. You can just wait until they're almost at you, because by then they'll just be locked onto their course and then jump out of the way sideways. The bombs are by far uh, the most frustrating thing of the first part of this boss fight. When its energy gets low enough, it'll start to... Yep, there it goes. It's going to spin around the room. At this point, you can't really jump on it. And yes, if it rams into you, it is going to hurt. Oh yes, and it does shoot missiles while it does that, just just to amplify the fun. Now I really should be using my fireworks for this battle, but I'm going to try to do it without them. This bastard is harder to hit at a range, so what you might want to do uh, is, when it goes in a certain direction, follow behind it. Although if you do that, you've got to be ready to jump out of the way, because sometimes it will bounce back the way it came. Oh, Jesus. I think its boss health is low enough, or almost low enough, that I can just be an idiot and charge at it with guns blazing. It, oh, jeez. Okay, hit detection was a little sketchy now. Okay, now you're dead. Now you're dead. Alright. And thus clears World 4. Right. Oh. Wall glitch. Wall glitch. Hey, the shadow's going through the wall, too. Well, early PS1. I'm not going to complain about that. Alright, and now we will move on to World 5, which, if I remember correctly, is the city area. Why, it most certainly is. Next time on Jumping Flash, World 5, the city. Do-wop, do-wop, listen to the music, do-wop, do-wop, do... -wop, do -wop, do -wop, do -wop, do -wop.